I'm Colonel Douglas Mulberry, U.S. Army Garrison Hawaii Commander. Today I want to talk to you about energy conservation. It goes without saying that the Garrison is committed to reducing our energy and water costs through low-cost conservation measures. But as we look at the fiscal realities and reduced budgets facing the Army and our Garrison over the next few years, energy conservation is absolutely critical. In 2010, our total Garrison energy bill was $67 million. That's a staggering figure. And that high cost impacts our ability to fund programs and projects that improve the quality of life in our garrison. I'm sure you're aware of the budget deficit situation within the federal government, and the Army is not sheltered from funding cuts, which are already upon us. In order to ensure we are funding the most important programs for our soldiers and families, we can't waste money needlessly on energy. It's imperative that we instill a culture of energy conservation in our soldiers, families, and civilians. Every soldier and civilian must practice energy conservation as if they were paying their own home utility bill. The video you are about to see details what we all can do as members of our installation community to reduce energy use in our everyday lives. Much of it is common sense, but a good reminder of how each and every one of us can contribute. A full team effort is essential to success. The following outlines Army Regulation 420-1 standards, which each of us in this command must adhere to to reduce waste and make us more efficient. Every military unit, directorate, any tenant in a garrison building is required to have a UECO, Unit Energy Conservation Officer, and a Building Energy Monitor. Their job is to encourage participation, um, let others know the importance of energy conservation. Anyone can call the DPW service line, whether it be a UECO or just someone that's in housing and needs something to be fixed or they see something out of the ordinary, like say lights on, left on 24 hours a day. A simple thing, a simple act of simply switching your computer off at night uh, will save a lot of energy. At the end of every day, general purpose office equipment, copiers, printing devices, faxes, and similar equipment will be turned off. Don't forget computer monitors that consume significant energy and peripheral devices such as speakers, scanners, and external drives. Consider using a power strip for external devices to consolidate. However, another thing that we're actually on the lookout for is making sure that your the minimizing, if eliminating, if possible, the use of excessive power strips. Uh, by that I mean a power strip which is hooked up into a power strip which is hooked up into another power strip. Where you've got a daisy chain of power strips in order to extend a circuit. Remember, computers and peripheral devices in conference rooms, video teleconferencing, and kiosks should always be turned off when not in use, and also for extended periods of absence such as vacations and holidays. Computers, desktop units, and personal computers can remain on for IT purposes only when the computer is capable of, configured, and or enabled for energy-saving features such as standby or low-energy usages modes. So you, by doing a very simple act, simply switching off your lights, turning off your computers, pulling out plugs wherever you can, and turning off appliances that are not necessary, are actually contributing to reducing the carbon footprint. We are reading 91.3, 91 foot candles roughly, which is, uh, it's so high it's off the charts. So remember we're shooting for something like about 30 foot candles. So this is where we come in and our team comes in and goes from fixture to fixture uh, and then D lamps takes one lamp, it's a very simple concept, takes one lamp out of these, this example which is a four lamp fixture by pulling one lamp out, out of every other, if, if not every single two by four fixture just like this one. 
Other easy but essential electrical strategies include eliminating off-hour and exterior lighting, except when essential for safety and security purposes, as required by AR 190-11. If lighting is required, the use of motion sensor controls will be evaluated for cost effectiveness. Once the presence of a human or uh, someone within the perimeter is detected, the lights will turn on. So assuming that that's the case, most likely the lights will not have to be on for most of the night. So you, assuming you've got four to five of these larger 100 watt systems on a building like this one, you're saving a lot of, a lot of money. Ensure electrical equipment and appliances, including monitors, fans, coffee pots, are turned off when not in use and during non-duty hours. We no longer allowed personal items in an area, such as coffee makers, personal refrigerators, uh, printers. Those are the things that we notice that drive a lot of energy. Refrigerators are authorized in work and office areas with sizing based on the number of personnel supported. We're not against refrigerators. Those refrigerators can be used as long as they're a communal thing. You have one in your kitchen, that's just fine. Uh, but please don't have them underneath your desk. And finally, what about those holiday lights that are a December tradition? The MCOM commanding general authorizes garrison commanders to set local policy on the use of outdoor decorative lighting, giving consideration to the use of timers or photo sensors for usage control. Whenever cooling is authorized, temperatures for occupied working and living spaces shall be maintained in the range of 74 degrees, plus or minus 2 degrees. Set-up temperatures during unoccupied time shall be set at 85 degrees, plus or minus 5 degrees. Space temperature for medical and medical research operations will comply with these standards, except where the mission or DOD standards require otherwise. And by cooling is uh, making sure your windows are closed, rather than open when the AC is on, uh, making sure that all of these systems are not working uh, for nothing, where basically energy is wasted completely. That's one of the largest culprits as far as the energy hogs in buildings. Maybe if the air condition temperature is set at 74, but it's still kind of cold in that area because it's the winter season, we can put it up to 75 or 76. Some of the things I look for during my day audit, it's about 10 o'clock in the day, if you notice this building, you'll see the windows are open in a probably centralized air conditioned area. That's wasting about $200 a month. Uh, noticing over here, we see some lights that are overlit in this area. Some of that could be removed. And if you scroll towards the right side, you'll see one of the doors are open. That's costing us about $500 a month. One of the things I'm noticing is this banking kiosk. The lights are still on and it's about 10 o'clock in the morning. The operation of portable heating and cooling devices is prohibited where the intent is to circumvent the heating and cooling standards outlined above. Use of personal supplemental heating or mechanical cooling devices must have supervisor written approval and must be used only when the area is occupied. The administrative use of vehicles, aircraft, and other energy-consuming equipment will be monitored for abuse and unnecessary use beyond what is needed for readiness. Engines will be turned off when vehicles are parked unless maintenance operations require the engine to be running. And lastly, all purchased appliances and heating, ventilation, and air conditioning equipment will be Energy Star rated for any new or replacement application. Education, training, participation, just getting people to change their behaviors about energy conservation. Maybe it wasn't on the top of your list before, it should be a priority now. So, as you can see, conserving energy is a basic responsibility of every soldier and civilian. Success lies in all of us working together to make smart energy choices and reduce wasteful behavior. 
so we can all preserve and protect today's resources for tomorrow. This is a part of our overall commitment as a garrison. Conserve energy and water, reduce waste, reuse materials and increase recycling, lower fuel consumption and air pollution, protect Hawaii's ground and surface waters, and purchase green products when, when available and economically reasonable. Thank you again for your help in this important effort and for all you do in support of our great nation.